All right, here we're going to find a power series representation for the function, the natural logarithm of 1 minus x over 1 plus x. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as the natural logarithm of 1 minus x minus the natural logarithm of 1 plus x. So again, using properties of logarithms. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to find a series representation for each one of these. So again, uh, 1 over 1 minus x, uh, we can write that as the series n equals 0 to infinity of x raised to the n power. And kind of the observation is, well, if we integrate 1 over 1 minus x, well, we'll integrate the right side as well. Summation n equals 0 to infinity of x raised to the n power. Well, if we integrate 1 over 1 minus x, we can just do a u substitution. Um, you know, we can let u equal 1 minus x. So du is going to be negative 1 dx. So negative du will equal dx. So really, we're integrating negative 1 over u du. And that's going to give us negative the natural logarithm of u. But again, u is 1 minus x. OK, and in this case, um, Let's see, when we integrate the right side, we'll just get the series n equals 0 to infinity. We'll get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Now, we have to be careful. Um, you know, somewhere in here we have to add a plus c. So I'm going to add the plus c. So what we have at this point, um, we've got the... Uh, that the negative, the natural logarithm of 1 minus x, that's going to equal c plus our series n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Well, if we let x equal 0, notice we'll get on the left the negative, the natural logarithm of 1. Um, on the right side, we'll be left with c plus well, when we plug in x equals 0, we're just going to be summing up a bunch of zeros. The natural logarithm of 1 is 0, so we've got that c equals 0. Okay, so really it says negative the natural logarithm of 1 minus x. That's going to equal the series uh, n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. But now we can just multiply the negative over and now we have a series representation for um, one of our functions. So I'm going to go back and do the exact same thing uh, for the natural logarithm of 1 plus x. Well, 1 plus x, we can write that as minus negative x. So then we'll have uh, negative x raised to the n. And we can rewrite that as just uh, negative 1 to the n times x to the n. Okay, so 1 over 1 plus x, we said that that's the same thing as what we have here, negative 1 to the n, x raised to the n. So now what we're going to do, again, is just integrate both sides. So the integral of 1 over 1 plus x dx, that's going to be the integral from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the n, dx. Well, same thing, you can just do a u substitution. On the left side, we'll be left with the natural logarithm of 1 plus x. On the right side, <clears throat> when we integrate, we'll have n equals 0 to infinity, um, negative 1 to the n, and then x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Again, the same thing, we need to stick a plus c in here. But just like before, if we let x equal 0, we'll get the natural logarithm of 1 on the left side. Um, our series will just turn into a bunch of zeros. So the same thing as before, we'll get that c equals 0. So now we have the natural logarithm of 1 plus x. n equals 0 to infinity. Um, we've got negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Alrighty. So, when we go back to our very original expression, the natural logarithm of 1 minus x minus the natural logarithm of 
1 plus x. And again, this series representation is only going to be valid for x between um, negative 1 and positive 1. So these will always be positive anyway, so we can drop the absolute value. So let's see, we said the natural logarithm of uh, 1 minus x, we said that that was, that gave us the negative, the series, n equals 0 to infinity, of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So now we're subtracting away the series representation for the natural logarithm of 1 plus x. Well, that's the series representation we found here. So that's n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1, all over n plus 1. So I think what we can do here is we can probably, uh, we should be able to combine this a little bit, a little bit better. So... What I'm going to do is maybe even just imagine expanding these out a little bit. So um, in our first series, if we expand it out, if we expand this out, we'll have, well, when we plug in 0, we'll have x to the first um, over 1. And then when we plug in x equals, or excuse me, n equals 1, we'll have x squared over 2. And then x cubed over 3, uh, etc. Okay, uh, we've also got, let's see, so the negative of the series n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So let's see, there's our negative sign out front. When we plug in n equals 0, we'll have negative 1 to the 0, which is going to be just a positive 1. And then we'll have x to the first over 1. When we plug in n equals 1, it looks like we're going to get a minus. Uh, and then we'll have x squared over 2, and then we'll have a, a positive x to the third over 3, minus x to the fourth over 4, etc. All right, so you can really think about this as, uh, you know, we've got our negative of our series. We could even think about this as being plus the negative of the other series. So really you can think about what we're doing here is we're just adding these two things together. So in the top row, if we distribute the negative, we've got negative x minus x squared over 2. Um, did I do my sign? Let's see. So yeah, we've got, they're all negative. Thought I made a mistake for a second there. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so that's our very first expression here, the negative of the series from 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, we're getting all of this expression. And then we can add to that the negative, the negative of the second series, which is what we have here. So we said when we distribute the negative, that'll be negative x. We'll get a positive x squared over 2, negative x to the third over 3, positive x to the fourth over 4, etc. So it looks like when we combine these two series together, it looks like we're going to get negative x plus negative x. That's negative 2x. The uh, x squared terms are going to cancel out. But then we've got a negative x to the third over 3 plus another negative x to the third over 3. So that's minus 2x to the third over 3. The x to the fourths will cancel. We'll have minus 2x to the fifth over 5, um, etc. So all I'm going to do is just uh, clean this up one more time. We could factor the negative 2 out front, and then we have x plus x to the third over 3, plus x to the fifth over 5, etc. All right, so we've got negative 2 times the series, n equals, um, I'm going to start it at 0 to infinity. Um, we could write this as x to the 2n plus 1, all over 2n plus 1. Notice when we plug in n equals 0, we'll get x to the first over 1. When we plug in uh, n equals 1, we'll get x cubed over 3, etc. So I would say this is now our nice compact series representation for our very original function.